humans are very visual creatures. Sight is our dominant sense, and 50% of our brain is dedicated to processing visual information. We're also really quick with our sight. University students and adult business people read, on average, 250 words per minute. Let's compare this with a speaker, whether they're in a meeting, giving a presentation, or running a workshop. They're usually speaking 150 words per minute. What does that mean for our meetings, presentations, and workshops? It means a few things. First, if I give the audience something to read, they will read it because sight is dominant. This could be a paper handout or a PowerPoint slide. Second, if there's a lot to read, they will finish reading it or at least finish scanning it with their eyes before I ever start speaking most of that information. And third, if the audience is reading, they're not paying as much attention to what they're hearing. The focus isn't on me, the speaker or the workshop facilitator. And ultimately, I'm overloading their senses and stopping them from forming long-term memories with my workshop content. Now, how does this affect us when we're using PowerPoint in our presentations? Well, let's take a look at a very text-heavy and bullet-heavy slide. Most of you are reading this because you're human. Now, I can show you a text-heavy slide and simply quit talking. I could give you a handout and say, please read silently for one minute. It's not always bad to show this, but most of us know from slide design tips if I'm going to talk about one piece of information, I can put that on one slide and I can add some attractive and memorable visuals. For example, if I want to talk about the ATD headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia, I can show you a map. I can show you where Alexandria is. I can talk about the office and being in the office, other things to do in Alexandria. And this would be the focus. The audience hasn't even seen the content that comes after this. I haven't showed it to them, and that's my choice as a presenter. Or is it? In the business world, there may be managers or clients that say, we don't want 25 slides. We don't want slides with a lot of visuals. We want you to have three slides with a lot of bullets and a lot of graphs, and we also want you to send that to the attendees as a PDF or a slide deck after your workshop or meeting. So we don't want to anger our managers or our clients. So what can we do to present information on one slide that doesn't overload their senses and doesn't have them reading ahead? Well, we can use that one slide. We can just choose when things appear. So we can say today we'll talk about the Association for Talent Development. And it was founded in 1943, and I can talk for two or three minutes about that first meeting and the small number of people that gathered. And then I can talk about today, the headquarters is in Alexandria, Virginia, and so on and so on. And I can let groups of information appear if that's what I think will help my presentation and the audience. Another example is with images, graphs, or charts. I might be concerned people see all these statistics. They start interpreting what this means. No, no, no. Let me show you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about ATD revenue in three different years. First, let's talk about the year 2017. I can talk about there was 42.6 million US dollars in gross revenue. I can talk about how much came from conferences, how much came from education. And then when I'm ready, I can go to 2018. And of course, whenever I'm ready, 2019. Now, how do we do this? Whether we're using PowerPoint, or Keynote, or other programs. Let me show you three methods. First, we'll take a look at the built-in animation effects on both PowerPoint and Keynote. Second, we'll take a look at copy, paste, and delete. This method could be used on PowerPoint or Keynote. And copy, paste, and cover. Again, no matter what program you're using, these methods are easy to do. And some of these might be preferred if you are creating your own slides or you've been given slides by someone else. Let's first take a look at Microsoft PowerPoint and the built-in animation effects. Now you can have a text box, you can have bullets, you could have images, you could have graphs, whatever you want. Highlight it and go up to animations. I choose appear 
because I want things to just appear. I don't need things to fly in. I don't need those fancy effects. I just want it to appear when I'm ready. And I'm going to allow it to appear by paragraph. So if I've hit the, the enter key or the return key, this first bullet will appear. Then when I hit my remote or my next button, the second bullet, then the third bullet. Let's take a look at Mac Keynote. It's very similar. I'm going to highlight whatever I want. I'm going to go to animate and add an effect. Once again, I prefer appear. And I don't want this delivered all at once. I don't want that full text box. I want it to appear by bullet. Great. Now, don't forget there's a graph here. I'm going to click that, add an effect. I want it to appear. And it's going to now appear after those other bullets, ninth in order. So I'd have to click through nine times to get to it. Or I could change that if I wanted to. I can also choose to have that appear all at once or by segment. If I only want to look at the 40% of revenue from education, I can let that part of the graph appear. Now, let's go on to that second method, which, which I called copy, paste, and delete. I'm going to use Mac Keynote again, but it doesn't matter what program you're using. This is very easy to replicate. So if I've already created this slide and I don't want to use the animation effects, or maybe I'm just not comfortable with the animation effects, I can take that entire slide and you'll see the thumbnail on the left side. I'm going to copy and paste that many, many times. And I'm going to go back to the first slide that the audience is going to see, and I'm going to delete the information that I don't want them to see yet. Actually, I'll delete this entire text box because the first thing I'll say to my audience is today I'm going to talk about the Association for Talent Development, and there we go. Now, on the very next slide, once again, I can get rid of any information I don't want, and I'm going to remove almost all of it except that first bullet point. And then I'll go to that next one. And this does get a little repetitive, but if the goal is not overloading the audience, then the time it takes to do this is well worth it. So again, I can show them the title. I can show them the first bullet, the second bullet, so on and so on and so on. Now for the final method, which was copy, paste, and cover. This works really well if I've been given a slide that I can't edit, or if maybe I downloaded this graph and I simply cannot edit those different bars or the information. What do we do to create these builds, this animation? Well, I'm going to add a shape. Let me add a square. And I can take that square, and I can choose to cover any information that I don't want the audience to see. Now, of course, this looks kind of ugly. I mean, the audience knows something's being covered. They're wondering what's that box doing there. Well, I want to avoid that. I can simply change the font color or the shape color. Now, I know that's there, but the audience doesn't. Now, once again, I can go up here and I can copy and paste that as many times as I want. Remember that gray box is there. On that second slide, I can simply edit the shape, let 2017 appear. On that next slide, I can edit that shape and let 2018 appear, so on, so on, and so on. Now, when the manager or the client wants those final slides sent out, they'll have this one final slide, but they didn't know I was even using those gray boxes or any of these other effects. So if your goal is to not overload your audience visually, if your goal is to have them focus on you, the speaker, and if your goal is to be memorable and persuasive, taking the time to learn or use these methods is well worth it. Happy presenting in your future workshops. Mm -hmm.